so going back to the previous slide so for the the external sources so it is also it further group into primary and secondary data so we have here the classification of external data so we have the primary and the secondary so the primary data so the primary data is the first hand information collected compiled and published by organization for some specific purpose so they are most original data and have not yet have gone under any statistical treatment its validity is greater than secondary data so example of this is population census reports uh, they are date they are primary data because they are collected compiled and published by the population census organization so basically primary data is first-hand information so it is the data that is collected so the raw data that is collected and, ha and not have undergone to any statistical treatment have that gone to the so-called nor uh, the uh, the nor normalization so and other statistical treatment that is uh, uh, applicable to that certain data okay So we have methods of collecting primary data. So we have direct personal investigation, indirect oral investigation, investigation to observation, investigation to mail questionnaire. Then we have also the local uh, the local enumerators. So investigation to local reporters questionnaire. So we'll discuss each of these methods. So we have personal investigation. So the research the researcher conduct survey and collect data from it. So this data is usually accurate and more reliable through investigation so trained investigators are employed to collect the data so this data is collected by contacting individuals and by filing questionnaire this is the most popular method of collecting primary data so collection to questionnaire so the researchers, the researchers get the data from local representative that are based upon their experience so this method is quick but only rough estimate of the whole population so through telephone so to telephone you can call the, the respondent so the researchers get information through telephone this method is quick and give accurate information but is expensive then we have also the uh, advantages and disadvantages of primary data so they have the merits and the demerits so the merits is the targeted issued are addressed the data interpretation is better high accuracy of data address a specific research is issue and greater control so because it is a first-hand information so the the purpose of collecting the data is um, is um, what's called that is uh, achieved by collecting the primary data so the the objective of the problem is achieved by uh, collecting primary data so the demerits or the disadvantage so first the evaluated cost so it is uh, much more expensive time consuming because you are going to have yourself or other people going about surveying or other people observing a certain experiment that you are conducting or you yourself so it is time consuming more number of resources are required and sometimes you can get inaccurate feedback and required a lot of skill with labor then we have secondary data okay so the secondary data are the second-hand information which are already collected by some organization for some purpose and are av available for the present study the secondary data are not pure in character and have undergone some statistical treatment at least once secondary data may be available in published or unpublished form when it, when it is not possible to collect the data by primary method the investigator go for secondary data this data collected for some purposes other than the problem at hand so meaning the, sec the secondary data is used by another study or by another research but those data also are are the ones that you need in your research so that's why it is called secondary second-hand information so the problem of this uh, data is that it already undergone undergone some 
a statistical treatment at least once so we will be going to the advantage and the disadvantage of this later but we will just have first the methods of uh, how to collect the one and the example so example so economic surface of a country is candidate data because these are collected by uh, more than one organization like the bureau of statistics board of revenue and the banks Okay, so method of uh, collection of secondary data. So we have published sources. So we have the international, government, municipal corporation, institutional and commercial um, institutions. They have unpublished uh, research. So those are the sources of secondary data. Okay, so methods. So we have official. So employees in a bank. So we could... Um, collect their data if they are willing to give that one. They seem official, so the state bank and other um, offices. We have also technical and trade journals and newspapers. So the journals or the the uh, what's called that the um, is, uh, data given by some newspapers or other. Um, technical papers. They have also research organizations such as universities and institutes. So those are the methods of collecting secondary data. So the advantages and disadvantages. So first, the advantages, the merits. So quick and cheap source of data. So cheap because you don't have to um, to have yourself or have uh, someone in which you are going to give him or her compensation in order for you to collect the data then wider geographical area because sometimes this data tends to uh, to have much larger uh, coverage for example the data coming from a certain country or a certain community of thousands of people uh, compared to a uh, uh, primary data in which you are going only to collect um, a sample out of the whole population of that of that um, community the longer orientation period and leading to find primary data then the disadvantage so no fulfill of specific research needs or the objective of the study or the purpose on getting the data is not necessarily achieved then poor accuracy then we have the data are not up to date because those data have already been used then poor accessibility in some cases because uh, let's just face it so for example if you are going to collect data from a bank the bank will not readily give uh, its data to you because we have the so-called data data privacy act of a certain country especially in the Philippines we have now the data privacy act in which we could not um, get um, information of any person uh, directly so we need to go to some length especially um, uh, maybe we could have uh, the Congress or the government we will ask for information from the government that and we, had, and we will be trying to prove that uh, those uh, getting those data is for or, uh, it's for research purposes only and not to some uh, some other reason which could um, affect the privacy of the individual so difference between primary and secondary data so the primary data real-time data sure about sources of data help to give results finding costly and time-consuming process avoids biasness of response data more flexible so those are the um, main characteristics of the primary data compared to the secondary data so it is past data not sure about the sources of data so we are not sure if those data are um, uh, biased or unbiased um, we need to refine our problem then cheap and no time process con uh, consuming so the there is uh, less time consumed in getting the secondary data cannot know if in data is biased or not and less flexible 
So we have your example. So to understand the concepts, easily let us take an example. Suppose we are interested to find the average age of engineering students. So we collect the age data by two methods, either by direct collecting from each student himself personally or getting their ages from the university record. So the data collected by the direct personal investigation, so we are going to go to each and every one of the engineering student uh, getting their um, age so that is uh, the, this uh, the response are primary data or we could obtain through the record of the university or the record of the dean's office and those records are known as secondary data now by that example we could now see the uh, the main difference of that one because if you are going to us uh, in person you know, in person in actual the respondent so he could give you the exact uh, exact and correct uh, age whereas if the uh, given data is given secondary data or we are going to get the data from the dean's office so those data must uh, might be updated but it is not that updated for example if the student have enrolled at june or june so he would he will uh, fill out his uh, enrollment form that is that his age is 19 then you conduct the research on august but uh, his or her birthday is in july so the secondary data you get from the, this, the dean's office, um, uh, his or her age is 19. But during the interview, the age of the student is 20. So from among the two types of data that you gather, or the two data that you gather, the most up, up to date is the one you collected uh, from the student. And that is the uh, the importance or the main advantage of collecting primary data and not secondary data. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video. And we have finished our discussion on data collection. And I hope you learned something. And as always, enjoy learning.